Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today we're going to be doing a little sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, find out what month we're rewinding to and see the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. For the past few months, I have been stopping by and revisiting old sheet loads, and I call this the Sheet Load Rewind. Now, if after watching today's video, you're interested in seeing more, I will have the rewind playlist linked in that description box below. Also, at the end of this video, I will tell you how to download the printable that we'll be rewinding to if you would like to make some cards of your own and you haven't already downloaded this edition. Some months when I do the rewind, I do exactly as it was originally planned, but some months like this one, I switch it up just a little bit. Why don't we see what month we're rewinding back to and find out how I'm gonna change it up. Today, we will be rewinding back to July, 2020. This, I don't know if you'd call it a fun fold card, but it is a little bit different. The front of the card is cut short so you can see some of the inside which is decorated. Originally this was meant to create eight cards, but, but today we're going to switch it up just a little bit and instead of creating with two sheets of pattern paper, I'm going to create with one. There are some special notes on this one, like how you cut the card base and still get your spot for your sentiment, but we will go over that later. Don't forget, I will tell you at the end of the video how to download the printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'll be using for today's cards. Since July is a popular month for a little Christmas in July fun, I thought that is what I would do. I'm going to be making some holiday cards. So I got out a stamp set here from Inka Dinka Do that is from 2008. But you know what? This just goes to show you old stamps work just as well as the brand new. Use what you have in your stash. I will be using either the Merry Christmas one here or the Wishing You Happy Holidays. I think those fit best with the sketch. To match the paper, I plan on stamping the sentiment in Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus. And for my card bases, I will be using some craft cardstock. Now the way that I'm really going to switch it up this month is by using a single sheet of pattern paper and this is from Minte's Time of Wonder line and normally you're like how are you going to use that big scene for cards? Well recently I watched a video from Jessie Kate Creates where she shared that she had bought some of this paper like with these big background scenes and she had watched videos from May May Made It that are called like mystery cards. What May May does is she turns this paper over and just cuts it into card front size pieces. Now I'm still going to try that with turning it over, but today I need to be just a little bit strategic. I will link a video of May May's in that description box below so you can get more ideas of what I'm kind of going for today. But basically, when you chop this down, even into little sections, they can make some pretty fun cards. Because we're only going to use one piece, instead of getting the eight cards, we will yield six. And there will be a little bit of special cutting if you're going to use a piece of seam paper like this. But I will show you what we're going to do when we get into the process. Speaking of the process, when I add any other products or tools, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! 
I'm going to get started with the cutting by cutting that single sheet of pattern paper. Now originally you cut four of each piece side by side, but because we want the image to flow from the front to the inside, I will be cutting them one right after the other. So the pieces are five inches tall, so I cut off the branding strip and then flip my paper around and cut five inches from the bottom. Now for the second one, I did want more of the area on the top of pattern paper to show. So once again, I rotated that around and cut five inches from the top. Now when we go to cut, because we want that image to flow, I will actually be cutting the papers upside down to me. I will be cutting the first one at two and three quarters, and then the second piece at one inch. You'll see here then when they're both flipped and turned back around as they will sit on the card that the image goes from left to right without any breaks. I continue cutting the pattern papers until I have six sets. Now I did make sure to keep the pieces together and I kind of offset them to the side of the cutter. Next, I brought in three pieces of craft cardstock to cut down for my six card bases. Because the front is cut a little shorter, there are a couple ways you can do this, and I did note some special instructions on the printable. We're actually going to be cutting an inch off the front and using that strip that's left over for our sentiment pieces later. For now though, I'm just going to cut each of these pieces in half, and then in a little bit I'll show you how to turn them into the card bases. To map my pattern papers, I brought in two pieces of fresh asparagus cardstock, and I will be using the instructions for CS2 to cut these down. All the sizes from the printable are correct, as well as the layout of the cuts, but you will only need to cut until you get six sets instead of eight. So really, this just takes a sheet and a half of cardstock. Now we're going to work on getting the mat for the sentiment. Now you can always bring your stamp to the sketch and as long as you print it out at 100% it will be actual size. You'll see here that the sentiment I want to use is a little bit wider. So instead of cutting my mats at three and a quarter inches wide, I will be cutting them at three and a half inches wide. So I just brought in some scraps of kind of maroonish colored cardstock and I cut them down until I had six pieces that were the size I needed. Now let's work on those card bases. For the first one, I'm going to show you how to do it without any kind of scoring board. And what you'll do is just fold your piece of cardstock in half. I did go ahead and reinforce my fold with a bone folder. And then you'll cut one inch off one of the sides of the card. On the printable, it shows you cutting off the left, but it really doesn't matter because you can always flip that card around. Now make sure to keep that piece you cut off because we will be using that later for the sentiment. For the rest of these pieces, I went ahead and just cut that one inch off the left side first. Then to turn them into the card bases, I brought in my mini score buddy, or I guess just a score buddy, and I scored it at four and a quarter inches. That way when you fold it to the final size, you have that front cut a little bit short and both of these card bases look the same, so it's no big deal if you don't want to score your card or don't have a board to do that with. I continued scoring and folding until I had six card bases all ready to go. Using my little Fiskars photo trimmer, I brought back in the craft strips from the card bases that I just cut and I cut these to three and a quarter inches wide. Once again, mine are a little bit different to accommodate my sentiment stamp. Speaking of sentiment, that is going to be the next step for me. I will be using my mini Misty along with the Happy Holidays sentiment from the stamp set. 
For my ink, I am using Gina K's Fresh Asparagus. And now the good thing about the Misty is I can set this stamp up once and stamp all six pieces right in a row. Now these stamps are kind of old and they're not made with the same quality of photopolymer as is used now. So for me, this first one turned out a little bit spotty. Now it is common for a new stamp, which I've never used this to do that, but this is a little different. So if you ever run into to this problem what I do is I ink it up first with some Versamark ink I did make sure to clean off the green before I inked it up and then I use my fresh asparagus now to get a nice solid green I did ink it up and stamp it twice with that but you'll see here that it looks so nice in the end I kept inking up and stamping until all six were done. Now if you notice that your stamp image is looking a little bit spotty again you can always clean it off, add some more Versamark, and then repeat. Once all those were stamped, it was time to add them to their maroon mats. This was super simple. I just added some adhesive to the back and centered them on their mat. Since I was already in the matting mood, that is my next step again, but this time I am matting the pattern papers onto their fresh asparagus mats. Once again, I kept these nice and flat by adding adhesive to the back of each piece and just putting it flat down onto the cardstock. Now you will want to make sure that you're still keeping the two pieces together that flow or create that single image. Once all of those were matted, I put them onto the card bases. The little piece goes on the inside and you'll want the border to be even on the outside edges. And also make sure you know what the top of your piece is if you're using a pattern similar to mine. And then I added the larger piece to the front of the card. Once again, just trying to keep the borders even all the way around. You'll see here, once the pieces are put down, the image does flow from the front to the inside of the card. Now, of course, there is that little gap with the matting and the borders on the card front, but I really like the way this looks, and I'm glad I gave this a try. Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to be looking at your big scene papers differently from now on. Here's a look at all six cards so far, and if you look, the way that they are laid out on my desktop is actually what the piece of paper looked like before I cut it down. On the original sketch, there is a suggestion of kind of like a twine or a thread nest behind the sentiment. You can add this or you can totally skip it. In the past, I have been known to use like squiggly wreath dies and die cut something to go in the back. But I thought for today, I would go ahead and try a thread nest. I got out some gold string I had here in my stash. I cut a length of it and then I placed it onto the back of my sentiment piece that I had already put some adhesive in the center. You want to make sure you don't go too far to the outside since some of it does hang over the front. Once I had it in place, I did kind of tweak it a little bit to get it looking like I wanted. But once that was done, I moved on to the next one, following that same process of putting down some adhesive, cutting a length of the string, I wrapped it around four fingers, and then placed it onto the back. Most of these I did have to do a little tweaking, and you'll see there on that one I actually had to cut some extra thread off. I kept cutting and thread nesting until all six were done and now it's time to get these put on the front of the card. Now you can definitely adjust where you want your sentiment on there by moving it up or down. The only thing to keep in mind is when you put the adhesive on it, which for me I am going to pop it up with some foam tape, that you make sure that you don't put it too far to the right. So when you open your card, actually if you put it too far to the right you won't be able to open your card, but you'll see here that when I do open mine there is no adhesive showing past the front of the card. I kept adding adhesive and popping up these sentiments on the six card fronts. After I had all the sentiments in place, 
off camera, I added some of my favorite embellishments, Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots. These have a gold circle in this case, and the center is clear with a little glitter. I placed three around the sentiment, usually two on the front and one on that inside piece, to add a little sparkle and tie in that gold thread. And here is a close-up look at each of the finished cards. I hope that you enjoyed this rewind to July 2020. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now I'll tell you how you can download the printable for free. As always, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel before you click on the link, which I will tell you where it's at here in just a minute. We do go on the honor system here. I don't make you send me an email with proof or subscribe to any kind of list. Just before you click on that link, make sure that you've also clicked on the subscribe button. It's free and it's easy to do. While you're there, you might also want to ring that bell for notifications. You're going to find this month's link in the description box right above my supply list. Below it, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. You can view it on screen or you can download it and print it just like I did here so you have a hard copy in front of you. That is up to you. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.